Welcome to Masterpiece of Crap Theater, and here is your host, Les Thespian. Well, hello folks, and welcome once again to the Christmas edition of Masterpiece of Crap Theater. I am your host, Les Thespian, and today have we got a real scary Christmas film for you. We have... we have... There is no DVD of it that I'm aware of, or video cassette for that matter. But don't worry, the film we'll be reviewing today is in fact public domain, so we should easily find online scans of it. Yes, we are talking about Santa Claus. No, not that Santa Claus film. No, not even that one. I was referring to a 1959 film from Mexico, simply called Santa Claus. Now, as I said, it is public domain, so it is perfectly all right to find online scans of it as well and review that, I suppose. Let's get started, shall we? So, as our film begins, well, we see that this was actually a film made in Mexico. Kind of ironic, because there are no Mexican subtitles here. What do you say we skip past the beginning credits and get to the heart of the story, shall we? Ah, uh, yes. Perhaps I should have mentioned that there's narration throughout this film. It starts out way up in the heavens, far beyond space. I suppose it's outer space. It's never really clear. But apparently Santa's workshop is here. Santa Claus is getting the place decked all for Christmas season. And, well, basically, he's kind of a peeping Tom without any kind of real reason. Oh, right, that's enough rhyming. For God knows what reason, Santa never stops laughing, even at the most inane things. I mean, yes, like decorating the entire castle. And, yes, we see him actually la la lying to Silent Night, a religious Christmas song that has nothing to do with Santa Claus. As a matter of fact, you might be and not be surprised at all to discover there are quite a few religious overtones throughout this film. Really? Well, I suppose we'd better start here, in Africa. Is that incredibly racist that they have bones in their hair? I don't know. I probably might be in danger of getting the three-mile stare. If I look too long, I might discover that there's some really strange things under the cover. These are the Spanish children. I have no idea what they're singing, but I am pretty sure it has nothing to do with Christmas. Even the children of China lend a hand as well. I don't know what they're singing, but I am pretty certain that it is not a Christmas song. Santa even keeps tabs on the children of England. Who for some reason are singing London Bridges. Not a tra traditional Christmas song. I do not understand what is going on here. Yes, I probably should have mentioned that instead of having elves or helpers, Santa Claus is basically using children to help him out. Well, talk about child labor. Should that not constitute as child slave labor? To cut a long story short, too late, well, Santa is keeping tabs on the children of Italy, Russia, and in Canada, and even the Caribbean, even the Caribbean. Did I mention that the children are his helpers here and he has no real elves? Santa is a slave driver. Finally, we get to the children of the USA that are singing, Mary Had a Little Lamb for some reason. Once again, not a Christmas song. Will somebody please explain what is going on here? And there's more of Santa Claus and his rather maniacal laughter. Well, jump cut to hell, and, well, yes, 
These are the demons dancing around, enjoying their hellish games. One such, one such individual demon is basically tasked with ruining Christmas for everyone around the world. <clears throat> Lucifer has had enough of the celebration, and well commands all of the other demons to leave except for one named Pitch. He will be tasked with the assignment of ruining everybody's Christmas all around the world, and if he should fail to do so, his punishment shall be... Chocolate ice cream. Chocolate ice cream. That is his punishment. Boo! Well, at least we're off to a rather bad start. And so now the devil, or Pitch in this case, has arisen to Earth. And he has promised Satan that he will destroy Christmas and makes Santa Claus angry, but will Pitch be able to keep his promise? And we have the chance to introduce ourselves now to the little rich boy of the story. And you are? Here is a good little boy. His daddy is quite rich. That's very good to know, then. We know that Santa will not disappoint him. A boy whose name will not be mentioned until the near end of it. How very exciting. In other words, it gives us no time to get to know this child. But meanwhile, in another part of the world, well... We have a Mexican family that are quite poor, so Santa will likely disappoint them. And this is where we're introduced to the main and to the main protagonists here. A little Mexican girl named Lupita. I think I said her name right. She is longing for this doll in the window. The this is Santa's magic telescope that allows him to spy on all the children of the Earth. Ooh, Santa Claus is a creepy one, isn't he? And so the magic telescope opens. And what's the story with those lips there? And that eye. Whoa, whoa, I spy there. I see an eye there. Is that you, Santa Claus? So as Lupita is watching a puppet show here, of two puppets just hitting each other, sort of like this with the Three Stooges routine, only with two of them, she's still dreaming about that doll that she saw in the window. But Lupita ends up stealing this doll that she sees here on this little stand. Lupita! Lupita, come here! But of course, stealing is wrong, and that's the moral here. No, no, Lupita! Don't steal that doll! You know that stealing is wrong! Trust me when I tell you, they keep hammering that message home every five minutes throughout this film. Or at least every time we see Lupita. It's yours. Nobody saw you take it, Lupita. They have more and they won't miss it. What does one little doll matter, don't you see? You haven't got any toys. Keep it. Mm -hmm. Don't listen to him, Lupita. It's bad to steal, and you'll be sorry. I had no idea that they were breaking down the fourth wall, and that the narrator had that much influence. Well, Santa Claus is most pleased that Lupita made the right choice and did not steal the doll. And now it's time to look for the other child they are seeking, and it turns out to be the rich American boy. And now it's time to read his dreams, because Santa is... Really, really creepy like that. The little rich boy is dreaming of, well, not toys. He's already got plenty of those. He's dreaming of having his parents for Christmas. Good thing this is only a dream, otherwise I'm sure they would have suffocated in there. So now it's time for Santa Claus and his helpers 
to look in on little Lupita's dream. I personally like to think that this is the creepiest part of the entire film. She's singing to herself a happy little song in Spanish, and that's when all the boxes open up to reveal life-size dolls that really do the do a dance for her, but really succeed in giving the audience the heebie-jeebies. And now here's where it gets really terrifying. As my disclaimer is made very clear, those of you with weak constitutions may wish to turn off now because this is the part where it gets really, really terrifying. She keeps repeating the same thing, that stealing is bad and she wants to be good. But it's really hard to concentrate on what little Lupita is saying with these creepy looking dolls here. Get rid of them now! Is anybody else disturbed by the giant dancing doll scene as I am? But fortunately Pitch wakes up and the dream is over. Lupita decides she wants to be good. With his blood! <laughs> so now it's time for the unblinking eye to see all yet again. So now it's time to see what the three bad little boys are planning. Their dialogue is coming through the lips there. Sort of like this was a really kid-friendly version of Rocky Horror. Santa Claus is personally offended that Santa Claus is called too old to know what's going on. Since the devil is a lot more, is a lot older than he is by many centuries. So now it's time to spy in on the little, on the three little morons. Well, right after them, the rich child leaves a letter to Santa Claus. Personally, if I had access to a home like that, I wouldn't bother wishing for my parents. I'd just have a whole load of friends, maybe some white wine and cheese dips and... Oh, who are we kidding? I'd probably have a big kegger there. So now it's the time for all the children of the world to write their letters to Santa Claus and to tell just what they want for Christmas. A new bicycle, a papa for mama, and an airplane. and a girl riding for a ball. She's going to grow up to be a tomboy. And then we have the three bad little boys who are basically writing lies and libel in their letter to saying that they've been really, really good. And is it just me or are those three bad little boys all triplets? The mailmen are counting all the letters that are being written by the little children to Santa Claus. You just have to love how accepting the grown-ups are here, that there really is a Santa Claus. But amazingly, said letters actually do get to Santa Claus. Old Papa Noel. I must say that I have never heard St. Nicholas addressed as Papa Noel. Think. I could be reciting Twas the Night Before Christmas right now. Instead, I'm given this to review. Shocking, isn't it?